So we just arrived at Quilquilco, just on the suburbs of Mexico City. Um, officially now, they say it's actually, there was people here over a thousand BC, you know, just, just past a thousand BC. Um, they even suggest that there was astronomical alignments here. And it kind of reached its zenith about 150 BC. Um, and at one point it was home to 20 to 40,000 people. This is interesting, so if they're saying 1000 BC now, this is like just, just after the peak of the Olmec culture that we have in you know, the, the Gulf Coast and also not too far from here at Chalcazingo and other places like that. But one of the weirdest things is, is that back in the 1920s, some dating was done on the lava flow because there's a local volcano very close to here. And it's thought that it was actually 7,000 years old, 5,000 BC. And this was research carried out by Professor Byron Cummings. And he was well known because he was one of the first people to investigate the Sonora Giants, the mummies discovered up in the Sonora Desert towards the North American border. Uh, it was published in the National Geographic that this site was 7,000 years old and therefore the oldest, definitely the oldest site in Mexico. So. I just find it absolutely fascinating that they've kind of redated it. They've now got it to 1000 BC. So for a long time, it was thought to be around 100 AD it was, the, was the peak time. So we're going to walk down the path, get to the pyramid, which is circular, very unique in Mexico, uh, and see what we can see there. Because there are some Olmec artifacts that I remember seeing in a small museum here that had very Olmec features. You can see parts of the lava flow just as you go in sort of lumps of it, all this basalt lava, which was obviously part of that great lava flow that was first recorded and put the date back originally to 7,000 BC, uh, sorry, 7,000 years old. In fact, when the, the site was first ever excavated, a strange blue light appeared above Quilquilca, above the main pyramid, and all the, the diggers and all the people who were excavating it believed they might strike treasure, and it was a sign of good fortune. Fortunately, they didn't. They just found some artifacts and some bones, but it was quite an interesting um, phenomenon because this whole area, Quilquilco, is actually built upon a fault line. Obviously, it's close to the volcano, but there's a fault line, a seismic fault running right along and right underneath the pyramid. That could have been the reason it was chosen for energetic purposes, because we know, again, there was water features here and also it just seemed like it was a ceremonial center. There's like a, what looks like a kiva, a small meditation space that we'll have a look at as well. And you can just see the shape of the circular edge of the pyramid here. Here we have like kind of the lower level that goes into the ground. Then we have the higher levels here, multiple levels going all the way up to the top. It'd be great to get some aerial shots of this because this is a very, very impressive site. I think part of it has been rebuilt but this is potentially one of the oldest pyramids in the country next to Leventa. So we're just heading up to the top level now, climbing up these final steps here at Quilquilco. So there's been, uh, there's also been discoveries of uh, some, f some like five altars here, and they have this red pigment, which I think is called mercuric oxide. And this was part of the, each level of the structure. Down the bottom, you can see one of the altars, we actually go inside it, which reminds me very much of a kiva of like, the Southwest tradition, uh, Southwest of North America. Um, but they've, they've, they've discovered more and more as they've excavated here. So there may be more to be discovered. There may be more under the ground, more deep within the pyramid and even under the lava flow. So who knows what else may be found. So these little kivas or these little kind of alcoves where they found this red kind of oxide rock, they all faced sort of east or west, east west. So there's a suggestion that they were kind of using that to look out from to actually measure the movement of the sun, the movement of the moon, and even the stars. So this does suggest, in my opinion, that this was an Olmec outpost, Quilquilco, and this was a continuation of what they were doing at Leventa, uh, where we know they reoriented the site consistently every few decades to align 
realign with the stars, which suggests that they were actually studying procession. So this could be one of the many sites where this was happening. And in the background there, in the far distance, this is probably the, the volcano that erupted, that ended the civilization here, which originally they thought dated to 7,000 years old, but more likely it was around two or to 400 AD where the last eruption anyway uh, destroyed this civilization and they had to flee from here and go to another area. Just zooming in on the red paint. I'm just zooming in on the red paint here and you can see the little designs, the zigzags, the spirals, classic designs we find in other stone chambers around the world including yeah. island, including other places. And uh, the way it kind of comes in here, it does it does look like it's like it had a domed roof originally. So here it shows you like the geology. And here you can see in this image here, why Quilquilco is part of this uh, fundamental fracture. You also got the uh, another fracture, which is like the purple color. And here, this is really is where we are. We've sort of got this, this area here is Kukulka, very interesting. And this just shows you where it goes through this particular area, showing you the different geology and the different lines going through here, and they're volcanoes. So Kukulka is most certainly part of this particularly strange geology, which would have caused the volcanoes and possibly the blue light that was witnessed here. So apparently these skulls here are slightly elongated you can't really see it clearly, but you can see some, some of kind of it. Just a fraction, like maybe it looks like the backs of the heads were, were sort of crushed slightly, rather than, rather than elongating them fully. Can't really see, yeah, you can see like a flattened back of the skull there. Flattened back of the skull which is one of the techniques that the ancient peoples were using, not to sort of make the skull longer, but just to cranial deform it, just for a different shape. You can't really see it too clearly on that one, but apparently these were cranially deformed.